Okay, so now we're going to look at the output of the amplifier. Now, can you see that? That is more of a that is more of a sawtooth type waveform. See how it's thinner at the bottom than it is at the top. And if you look at these two verticals, that one there and that one there, there's a, more of a gap here. This is sloping that way, sloping away. And uh, oh, I've got unhappy about something there. But um, you see what I mean when uh, when I talk about the linearity of the carrier. That is the output of the amplifier. Now, can I transmit and tune at the same time? I'll be able to. See if I can. Now, this is what happens if I change the loading. Oh, this might be because uh, um, I've got the drive radio running on a battery. I've had this before, and it will run and then it, uh, then it drops out because the voltage drops too low. Um, I hope that's what it is anyway, but uh, you know, let's try again. But you can see as I'm changing the loading there, it's quite easy to introduce some pretty nasty harmonics. But the um, the problem is, you know, when it when it's loaded so that there's something like a sine wave coming out of it, it doesn't look linear. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you have uh, have uh, experienced this. I'm going to try um, tuning the the, uh, the the input with a, with the tank circuit on the cathode. Um, I'm going to try a parallel tune circuit on the grid first, just to see what that does for it. Uh, and then I'll try a parallel tune circuit on the cathode. If that doesn't work, then I'll go back to the traditional tank circuit on the cathode uh, <clears throat> and see what uh, what happens there. But I wonder if anyone's built um, um, built any of these big amplifiers have had a similar problem with that carrier non-linearity. And could it be that um, most of them are a bit non-linear? Um, I could use this on the air and no one know the difference, but. Um, <clears throat> uh, lots and lots of people on here show you uh, homemade amplifiers coughing out lots of watts. And this will cough out lots of watts, it's no problem. Um, but they don't show you what the output waveform looks like. Now, maybe I'm being cynical, but uh, maybe that's why. Or uh, if you've uh, if you built a GS35B amp and uh, you come across a similar thing and you have any suggestions, it could be something to do with the bias, of course. Um, the bias voltage might not be high enough. I thought maybe if I increase the bias voltage a bit, but then we have to increase the anode voltage to get the, uh, the same amount of power out of it, of course. Um, but uh, regardless, anyway, if you've uh, if you've built one of these, um, I did leave a comment on. Uh, somebody's channel that made one of these. He didn't get very much power out of his one, but um, I said, uh, you know, have you looked at the output waveform? And he didn't respond to my comments, so I suspect he has. And uh, <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. But um, anyway, there we go. So that's where I am with the amp at the moment. So I haven't been sitting on my hands. I've been doing dribs and drabs in, in between, uh, you know, stuff that, uh, stuff that I have to do. And uh, this is just a hobby after all. Um, and that's where it sits at the moment. So I haven't given up. It's, uh, it's a work in progress and um, it will be finished and it will work properly. By hook or by crook, as they say. Alright, well, hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.